Hello and welcome to Renew, the show all about the College of Forest Resources. I'm Karen Brazier, your special guest, and today we have with us two students uh, in our college. Uh, Carson McFatridge, who is a wildlife fisheries and aquaculture major, is going to tell us a little bit about her and where she, how she got here. All right. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So, like you said, my name is Carson McFatridge, and I am from Searcy, Arkansas. And I know that, you know, we have a lot of out of state students here at Mississippi State and, you know, people, a lot of times we get that they've come here because of scholarship opportunities. Um, but I think one of the biggest things for me was the culture here at Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. I, you know, coming from a small town, I wanted somewhere that was going to be a home away from home. I wanted to not only live in a college that I felt comfortable in, but a town that I knew that I could go out in and serve throughout. Well, that's exciting, Searcy, Arkansas. So where is that uh, in the state of Arkansas? Yes. Kind of give us. So it's kind of in the northeast. It's um, well, it is in the northeast. Um, there's actually a town that's probably 15 minutes away from it. It's where I grew up, Bald Knob, and that is um, their slogan is where the Ozarks meet the Delta. So okay. growing okay. up, I had a very unique um, experience in landscape. I was I mean, I mean, 10 minutes away from bottomland timber and, and 10 minutes away from, from farmland and, and the foothills of the Ozarks. Okay. And you've chosen to major in wildlife fisheries and aquaculture yes. and you're a sophomore. So tell me what, um, what inspired you to choose that major? Yes. So um, coming into college, I was really interested in pursuing veterinary medicine. Like I said, I grew up on a farm. Um, I was always around livestock. And so I just kind of assumed that I would go on to do uh, large animal veterinary medicine. Um, but then throughout my first year, I was exposed to some different opportunities um, and some really unique experiences that kind of helped me figure out that my path was more along the lines of environmental law and policy. So okay. I decided to start seeking opportunities there. And I actually just recently changed my concentration pr from pre-veterinary medicine to um, agriculture and wildlife conservation okay. and learning about all the, all the policy that kind of goes into managing landscapes that are farmland, but also are home to many of our natural resources, um, including wildlife. Right, and because there's a lot of wildlife titles in the Farm Bill yes. that protect yes. wildlife in agricultural settings and actually uh, provide some incentive to farmers to protect that wildlife. Yes. So when you graduate, are you hoping to go to law school or what direction do you think you might I take? I do think that law school is in my future. I mean, I sure hope it is. Mm -hmm. In terms of where I would like to go, there's not necessarily a, a clear a clear shot right now of where mm -hmm. I'm of where I'm looking to go. I definitely want to go somewhere that I think will improve the skills that I have already and help me grow and develop into someone who could either represent constituents um, well in Washington um, or on the state level back in my home state okay. um, working in Little Rock um, or even working in some sort of um, private um, private sector type job mm -hmm. you know representing mm -hmm. you know how how does a farmer manage his land um, according to what is required of him from the laws that right. are out there yes right and there's a lot of conservation organizations that that work uh, to protect wildlife. You know, yes. we think about the National Wild Turkey Federation, yes. Quill. Ducks Unlimited, Quill yeah. Forever, yes. That's right, so uh, I know that, like that. Uh, the ag, wildlife ag intersection is an important one. It's yes. kind of a an emerging uh, major. You know, it's been in our college for a few years, mm -hmm. but not, you know, just a, yes. a long time. So it's exciting to see students really interested in that aspect. So while you've been here at Mississippi State, these long two years. Yes. <laughs> um, what have you been involved in as far as student organizations yes. or clubs? So I think that um, involvement is important within your college, but I think that it is even more important to go out onto campus itself and get involved throughout campus and, and learning that making wide circles is, is how you make connections. I had a professor once who stated to a class of, to our ambassador class actually, he stated that in this profession, it's not about what you know, but it's about who you know, or better yet, who knows you. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the things that I've sought to do here on Mississippi State's campus is get involved and meet as many people as I can. Some of the things that I've been involved with are um, access peer mentoring, where I'm paired with a student with a disability and we kind of work through every week. We, I'm a life skills coach, so we work through, you know, how do we, how do we live on our own? Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a really neat opportunity. Um, I also work with MSUSA. I am um, on the programming pod and I work with health and wellness. So I oversee some of the activities that we see on the drill field and mental health events and a lot of things like that. Um, and I kind of work as a liaison from the student body to that organization. So, okay. yeah. Well, thank you so much, yes. Carson, and we thank you for being here. And up next, we have Emily, uh, Emily White from a forestry major. And so we're looking forward to seeing what she has to say. Want a career as big as the outdoors? Want to have an impact on the environment? College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University delivers hands-on training, ensuring clean air and water, wildlife habitats, and a sustainable environment. Creating new wood products and retooling old ones for today and tomorrow. Find a career in whatever path you choose majors in forestry, natural resource and environmental conservation, sustainable bioproducts, wildlife, fisheries, and aquaculture. Want a career as big as the outdoors? Choose the College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University. Discovery. It tells our history and determines our future. At Mississippi State University, we're digging deep, unlocking an understanding of our past, validating it. Middle East exploration by faculty and students is uncovering evidence that unravels ancient mysteries. Scholars have long thought of the biblical kings David and Solomon as mythological figures. Our research offers evidence that supports their existence, boosting MSU into an international league of experts on archaeology. Now we're changing the way people think about the past, opening up new possibilities of understanding for future generations. Digging deeper, learning more. Welcome back to Renee. Uh, our next guest is Emily White, a forestry major from right outside of Birmingham. Welcome to the show, Emily. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so glad to be here. Well, we're so excited to have you and to learn a little bit about um, what you do, why you chose forestry. So, yeah. so let's just dive on in to why you chose to major in a field that is dominated by men. So. Honestly, I think I came to Mississippi State and chose forestry because of the opportunities for research and development in the field. Mm -hmm. um, this, it's, it's, forestry is one of those fields where it's constantly changing in terms of sustainability, especially with this new generation of students coming in, very focused on sustainability and preserving that land. Um, previously, it's always been backed by industry. There's a huge forestry industry through wood products and um, other things, you know, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunities for growth here, and that's what I saw when I came to Mississippi State. That's exciting. I mean, mm -hmm. it's exciting to be in forestry. It's exciting to have a new generation interested in sustaining our natural resources, like you said. Yeah. And you've participated in undergraduate research here. Yes. Have you? Can you tell us a little bit about your project and what you did? Yeah. So actually, I'm, I've worked on two different projects now. Um, Last year, I worked in the Sustainable Bioproducts Department um, with Dr. Beth Stokes, mm -hmm. and we did a project on measuring and preventing chemical leaching, preservative leaching from wood pilings in coastal waters. So the main preservative that we were testing was CCA, mm -hmm. so copper chromium arsenate. It's very commonly used um, in wood products, and uh, it, it's been found, there were several studies that found 
uh, arsenic in waterways and even on the hands of children that had played on playgrounds treated with this preservative. Okay. So it was very important. It's, we are developing a new uh, polymer coating that prevents that leaching. Okay. So I was basically testing that, testing uh, how well it worked for some companies that uh, hired Mississippi State to look at that for them. And That's now, exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. This year, I'm actually working in the forestry department with um, Dr. Courtney Siegert and uh, Dr. Joshua Granger. And we are looking at carbon sequestration in non-commercially grown tree species. So basically, these trees are store storing carbon, and we're looking at how much we're, we're looking at the menstruation of that carbon in species that aren't harvested for wood products that aren't used. So species like red maple, sweet gum, things like that. So when we think about carbon storage, we're thinking about, of course, how to store that carbon dioxide for uh, to you know mitigate climate change. Or, yeah, for or, carbon yeah. credits and things mm -hmm. like that. It's a very mm -hmm. new emerging market that uh, right. is really cool to look at. So. And so, um, it, you know, we always think about how much is stored in commercial timber, mm -hmm. like, you know, southern uh, pine or loblolly pine. Exactly. But we don't often think about, you know, the trees that aren't merchantable. Exactly. But those are storing carbon, too. So, yes. Yeah. It's, re it's really cool research that we're looking at. So. It sounds like great research. Mm -hmm. um, and so, have you done an internship also? I have. So, a couple summers ago, I did an internship with a nursery in Birmingham, um, right outside of Birmingham, Leeds, Alabama. And so, I was doing um, lots of tree species as well as perennial species that are native to the area. I was overseeing... Um, mitigation of the perennial pad and how how we can manage those and do, composing different soil mixes with different chemical compositions and stuff. Okay. And then this coming up summer, I'll be doing an internship with Westerville Ecological Services, looking at land management. Okay, so you've already got something <clears throat> lined up for the summer. Exactly. Well, we cer certainly appreciate you being here. Yeah. And we appreciate our guests for being here uh, on Renew. Uh, I encourage you to get outside, enjoy our great outdoors conserve, sustain, and use our natural resources for the benefit of all. Thank you so much.